How to Run Playwright Tests Using Jenkins. There are numerous tools available for doing end-to-end -end testing for web applications. One of the more recent entrants to this field is Playwright from Microsoft. In this video, we're going to create a Playwright project from scratch and then use Jenkins to run the test that we create. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has Docker installed on it. As I said in the introduction, we're going to be creating a project today. So although at the time of recording, the repository is empty, you'll be able to see the final repository when you watch this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Now, although Playwright supports TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Java, and .NET, we're going to be using TypeScript in this example. So you can see where we're starting at. I have my clean repository. I have a readme in it, but nothing else. And I've already cloned this repository and dropped it into VS Code. And you can see the readme is right there and there's nothing else in this directory. So the very first step that we're going to do is in the directory, we're going to run npm init and playwright. Now, if you're running any of the other languages, such as Java or Python, you're going to follow the examples that you have with that language. For example, with Java, you would import in the Playwright jar file and then just write your test and then run them using Maven, Gradle, or whatever tool that you're using to run your tests. But for this example, for TypeScript or JavaScript, we're going to be using NPM to bootstrap the project first, and then we'll create our test within this project. If your project already exists, then you would still go ahead and init Playwright with your project. As it's asking right now, do I want to use TypeScript or JavaScript? And in my case, I want to use TypeScript. Where do I want to put my tests? By default, it goes into the tests directory. If you already have a project that exists that already has a tests folder, you might want to put these somewhere else. Do I want to add a GitHub action workflow? No, thank you. And then what happens is it generates a couple of files for us. Now this will take just a couple of seconds, but what we will see here, number one, it created a package JSON file. That's what we would expect for anything that is an NPM based project. And then once this completes, which could take a few seconds, we'll check out the other files. Now, as the project finished, we can see now that we have a playwright config file, which is, or actually a playwright config.ts file, which has all of the defaults in it that we are expecting. In the case of testdir, it asks us about where do our tests exist? Well, right here is where they exist, .tests. The maximum timeout is 30 seconds, and the maximum wait time is five seconds. Again, if you want to adjust these from a global level, this is where you would do it. Now, what I wanted to show you more importantly are the projects. Playwright can run tests using Chromium, WebKit, or Firefox. And by default, they all run headless. So in a normal example, what I would want to do is I want to run my test for all of my browsers, Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. There are other options that you can uncomment here, but we're just gonna stick with those three for right now. So I'm going to not touch anything in my playwright config.ts file. Just leave it alone. We also have a package JSON and a package lock JSON. Again, nothing here to change, but I do want to call out something. What we're going to see here is our dev dependency at this point is 117.2. So that's the version of Playwright that we're going to be using. If we take a look at package lock JSON, again, the dev dependencies, nothing really surprising there. It created a git ignore for us, which is very thankful and very useful. And it also created one test for us. And let's take a look at this test. We're going to import in test and expect from playwright test. And then here's the basic test. We're going to go to a page. In this case, it's playwright.dev. We're going to go and look for get started. When we find it, we're going to click it. And then once that click happens, we're going to expect the page that's loaded to have the title of getting started. Now, in a normal life, I would sit and go ahead and go back to my console and actually try to run the test. But I don't want to do that. I want all of my tests from the step zero process to only run on Jenkins. So I'm going to create a Jenkins file here in the root. So I'm going to say Jenkins file. And we are in the root of the directory, yes. 
And I already have an example here that I'm going to start with. And let's take a look at what this Jenkins file is doing. Remember that I said the agent had Docker installed on it? The reason why we have Docker there is we're able to use an image provided by Microsoft that has the version of Playwright that we want to use. Think back to our package JSON. It had a dependency of 117.2 or higher. So I'm specifying 117.2 focal in the readme is a link over to the Playwright documentation about how to use container images to run your Playwright tests. In that documentation, you'll be able to see and look up what dash focal means. Now let's take a look at the rest of our pipeline. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install Playwright test, and then we're going to do an NPX Playwright install. Once this setup and install of Playwright is complete within our project, because we have not run that within our local project, so I'm going to just put that in my pipeline. I'm then going to run NPX Playwright test dash dash help just to see what help options are available to us. And then finally, we are going to run our test. Now, I'm adding in one extra step here, and I'm just listing out what tests are going to be run. Because if all of the tests run successfully, it basically says there were 30 tests, 60 tests, however many tests, and if they were all successful, it's just going to say done. So I want to be able to see what tests are going to be run, so I'm putting in this dash dash list. So let's go ahead and get these files committed. Taking a quick look at this, we have a git ignore, a Jenkins file, our two package JSON files, our playwright config.ts, and our example spec.ts file. Let's go ahead and commit all of these and say initial. We will go ahead and save all and commit and click on sync changes. And now if we were to go back over and look at our repository, we can see that all of the files now exist in the repository. So I'm going to copy my URL. I'm going to go back over to my controller and click on new item. I'm going to call this playwright pipeline, click OK. Pipeline script from SCM, get my URL. We'll change this to main and then Jenkins file. Let's click on save and then click on build now. Now, since that image has not been pulled yet, I'm going to fast forward through this and then we'll review the console output. Now that the job finished, let's scroll back up and look at what all happened. So we pulled down the image, then the container was started, mapping in our workspace. We then did the installation for Playwright test. Then we did Playwright install. Then we showed the help for Playwright test. And let's take a look at a couple of these. I could have specified a specific browser. If I only wanted to test for Chromium or WebKit or Firefox, I could have specified which browser I wanted to test. We could also run this headed, meaning I would need something like, especially on a Linux box, XFVB, in order to be able to visually see those browsers. Now we'll take a look at a few of these others. We could run it in quiet. We could add in retries. We can also override our timeout. And then we could also force, which is really nice, on first failure, we could say stop after the first failure. But we didn't specify any of those. It gives us a couple of examples here of what we would do if we wanted to run it that way. But we can see here when we add in our dash dash list, it's telling us that we're going to be running three tests using one worker. Now, three tests. Think back to this for just a moment. In our example, we only have one test. But think about it from our Playwright config TS perspective. We have specified that we're going to be running this test on three different browsers, Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. So that's the reason why we have three tests. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that we're running three tests using one worker. All three passed. It took 16 seconds. And then the job completes. Now let's go in to our project and let's break our test. So instead of just looking for getting started, we're going to look for getting started Z. So when it tries to do that match, I'm expecting a failure. Let's look and see what happens when we run this. 
So I'm going to say break the test. And we will sync the changes up. And then let's go back over to our controller and let's run this job one more time. No other changes other than changing our test. So this time, because the image is already there, this runs much faster. But what we're going to see when the test runs, we're going to see fairly quickly that this job is going to fail because when the match occurs, we're going to see failures on all three browsers. Now that it finished, what we can see is that we have a slow test file for Firefox, WebKit, and Chromium. Each one took 30, 24, 21 seconds. Consider splitting slow test files to speed up parallel execution. OK, we could have done that. But all three of these failed. So this is telling us, OK, for Chromium, the basic test, which basic test is defined in our test right here with the name. So give your test a really good name. And we know that it failed for Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. So again, that's good. But we did that on purpose because we expected the failure to happen because we broke the test match. And we can also see that the first two lines pass, but then the third line failed. What does that look like? If we go back and look here, this line passed, this line passed, that represents the X's, and then the F is the failure. So we failed on this line. So let's go ahead and fix this test just so it's done. But I want to go ahead and add a new test. Now remember that our tests exist inside of the test folder. So I'm going to say new file. I'm going to say jenkins-homepage.spec.ts. And for this test, grab my example, we're going to do something just a little bit different. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, again, first line import test and expect from Playwright test. Our test is going to be Jenkins homepage. We're passing in page and also browser name. These two names are special names, and there are others as well. But I want to be able to capture and do a screenshot of my home pages within Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. But I also want to be able to attach the names of whichever browser it is to that screenshot. So my test, three steps. We're going to load Jenkins.io. I'm expecting that page to have the title of Jenkins. So I'm doing at least a basic check is, OK, did I get what I expected? And then go ahead and screenshot that page. Now you'll notice that I'm using home page dash as a literal, but then I'm concatenating in my browser name, which is being passed in, and then .png, and then full page true. It will go ahead and scroll the whole page, not just a window. So this test is complete. However, in my Jenkins file, I want to be able to attach these screenshots back to my job run. So how do I do that? What I'm able to do is if I go back to my Jenkins file, what I'm going to do is I am going to add in a post block to the part where I run my test. So I'm going to go back over to my notes and grab my post block. And I'll paste it in here. And let's review this. What I'm wanting to do is I want to archive artifacts. Now, if you watched other videos about archive artifacts, you know that it may not be the best thing to do. But in this case, this is what I want to do for the time being. Longer term, I would probably take and put these screenshots somewhere else that can be viewed over time. But in this case, I just want to attach it to the job run for the moment. So I'm going to say archive artifacts. The artifacts are going to be homepage-star.png. Going back to my test of homepage-browsername.png. And then we're going to leave follow some links false. And the final step of this post step, and also notice this is on success. So if the test failed, I have made a conscious decision that I don't want to archive the artifacts if it failed. Now, I might want to make this always and always do it. But if this failed, I don't know if this actually worked or not. So I'm being a little more conservative in my test. And I'm assuming that if this passed, I only want to use the success path and save the images on the success path. So archive. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to remove any generated PNGs from the workspace because they were attached. And now I can get rid of them. 
So let's go ahead and save this, and let's go take a look at what we have going on here. We have changes to our Jenkins file, which we added in in our post block. We made the change to our example spec because we fixed the test that we had broken earlier. So that is now just getting started. And then we have our brand new test to open up the Jenkins homepage and then do a screenshot if that page has the title of Jenkins. Let's go ahead and say fix and Jenkins homepage. Save all and commit. Sync the changes. We'll click on OK. And then what we're going to do is go back over to our controller and let's go ahead and run the job. So we'll go back to Playwright, click on Build Now. And then what we'll see here for Build Run 3, we still see our help, we see our list, but this time list is going to show six tests. Remember, we have two test files, but within our configuration, we're running three. So two times three is six. Now we're running our test. This could take a few seconds. And we can see as it finishes up, it archives the artifacts, and then it goes ahead and removes the files, and it expands those out for us. So it deleted Homepage Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Then it stops the container. Now let's go take a look at the job run of three. And what we can see here is the artifacts from this job are Homepage Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. If we click into one of these, what we'll see is that we can see the full screenshot of Jenkins.io. If we go back, we can take a look at Firefox. We can see it's roughly the same. I won't click in on that one. And then also on WebKit, we can see that it also looks roughly the same. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.